All right, so we are talking about our ideas from the first semester. Um, we hit some of the vocab in the first video. Here's some more. Um, inertia, mass, and impulse momentum. Um, I'll deal with mass. They have something to do with mass. So um, inertia is really hard for some people because it is actually measured by the mass. And it is a resistance to change. So if you want to push a car or push a truck, which one's harder to push? Which one's harder to change what it's doing? The truck, because it has more mass. That's what inertia is. Um, you got a bowling ball and a baseball, both going the same speed. Uh, which one's easier to change its direction? The, the easier one would be the uh, baseball because it has less mass. So inertia is measured by mass. Impulse and momentum relate to each other. Impulse is actually a force being applied to something, usually for a short amount of time. Momentum is um, what something has because it's moving. So you got m times v. So something has a momentum. Uh, well, how do you give it a different momentum? How do you either slow it down or speed it up? You have to use a force. So impulse actually is a change in momentum. So f delta t actually is m delta v. I didn't put the delta outside of the MV, even though that's technically correct. Um, change in momentum. Usually because we don't change mass. Rockets, though, they change mass. If you're going to launch a rocket, um, the fuel's going to go away, so the mass is changing. So you actually have to consider that happening. But for the most part, impulse is change in momentum. And you're going to change the velocity. So these are all mass concepts. Inertia is actually measured by mass. That would be kilograms. And it is a resistance to a change in what's happening. If it's just sitting there, I want to get it going. Heavier mass, harder to change. Lighter mass, easier to change. Um, these are all things that came up already. I just drawn some things earlier, like V with that. Okay, speed. Well. Technically, it's an arrowhead over the V, but we get lazy on draw half an arrow. That means that that concept, V, A with an arrowhead over it, X with an arrowhead over it, is a vector concept. And a vector concept is something that not only has a number, it also has a direction. 35 meters per second north as opposed to just plain old 35 meters per second. Direction is a vector. Without a direction, it is a scalar. Scalar means it's got a scale. Now, instantaneous and average. Instantaneous means actually at an instant. The hard part for us is we never really able, are able to get an instantaneous in a classroom. We actually get averages of things, always. And that's hard for us to do. If we were to you know, measure how far something went and timed it, something went from here to here in a certain amount of time, we would get an average. Let's say it was at 2 meters here, and it was at 5 meters here, and it took 3 seconds. Nope, that's a bad number. Let's say it took 4 seconds. That means it went 3 meters in 4 seconds. It has an average speed of three quarters meters per second, 0.75 meters per second. Um, that doesn't mean that's the speed down here. Averages look, occur up there. That's hard for us to realize that we don't have instantaneous. Um, instantaneous is kind of like uh, hopefully the cop's radar gun is instantaneous as opposed to the cop in the uh, airplane above timing you between the lines on the road. Delta, let's change. That's a Greek letter. Delta X just means change in X, change in position. 
Newton's laws. He's got three laws. And you should be able to use bowling ball, hovercraft, and mousetrap to explain them. So, Newton's first law of motion. Uh, and I'm just going to do whatever it was doing beforehand. Unless acted upon by, and there are two extremely important adjectives. Outside, unbalanced forces. They have to be external. They have to be outside. So, a book is sitting there. It's going to sit there unless there is some outside unbalanced force. So, book there. If it's on a table, well, there's something acting on it. There's gravity acting on it. So, why doesn't it go down? Well, because the table's pushing back. Oh, wait. Those two are the same size. So, therefore, it doesn't change what it was doing. If it was sitting, the forces are balanced. It's going to stay sitting. Uh, bowling ball. Rolling down the road, down the hallway. It's going to keep rolling unless something changes it from rolling. Now, that could be friction, but a bowling ball is a pretty good job of rolling, and floors are pretty slippery. Um, and the friction might be changing it. So, we could say that. Uh, for the most part, bowling ball down an alley, alley alleys are waxed pretty well. So maybe it's not going to change it. But then there's a part of the alley that's not waxed very well, or waxed differently, and all of a sudden it curves. Yeah, it's because a spin caught what caught the alley. And then their friction actually did change it. So, um, pushes, pulls, forces. <coughs> Newton's second law is an equation, F equals ma. Um, now, that F is actually net, the sum of forces. All the forces add up. So, if my forces add up to 50 newtons, and I have a 10-kilogram object, what's going to happen to it? It will accelerate with an acceleration of 5, 5 meters per second squared. That's Newton's second law. It says it's an example of what's going on. Um, if I were accelerating our 10 kilogram thing at an acceleration of 3, that's a horrible 3, of 3 meters per second squared, how would we do that? Well, we'd have to get a whole bunch of forces, uh, or one force, and it would have to be a force of 30. Well, I could have a 60 one way and a 30 the other way, and that would net 30. I could have a 70 and a 40, and that would net 30. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Equal, that would be magnitude. That would be how big it is. Opposite means two things, actually. Opposite body, opposite object, and opposite direction. This is how we walk or how we drive a car or how we fly a rocket. We'll go back to the book and the table. Book pushes on table. Guess what happens? Table pushes on book. If the book pushes on table 10, the table pushes back up with 10. If it can't, then it's going through the table. Um, you push on the floor backwards, the floor pushes forwards on you. Uh, wheels on the car push backwards, the ground, they push backwards on the ground, the ground pushes forwards on the car. If there is nothing to push on the ground, like there's ice, we don't go. If I want to turn left, I got to push to the right. And if there's no friction, I don't go to the right. So you can use a bowling ball, hovercraft, mousetrap car even to explain the scenes. Hovercraft, they were pretty frictionless, not perfect. But some of you ran in the wall, and that was the force that stopped you. Uh, Mythbusters did a penny drop, free fall lab kind of thing. What did you find out with the penny drop? Everything wants to fall at the same rate. But there's aerodynamics involved it's that messes that rate up. It's got a maximum. 9.8 meters per second squared. We know that. Because that's gravity on Earth. If you're just dropping something, it shouldn't be accelerating any faster than that. Um, things could reach terminal velocity if they fall long enough. Uh, the wind resistance pushing up. 
is going to take away from that 9.8. And eventually it's going to cancel the 9.8 so it doesn't get any faster. It just goes at a terminal at an ending velocity. And then bullet fired versus bullet dropped. It doesn't matter how fast sideways you go. Send a ball off the table. does not matter. The only thing that matters is how tall that table is. If I fire a ball and drop a ball at exactly the same time, they will land at the same time. Obviously, wind resistance might play into effect here a little bit, some aerodynamics, but if you get two of the same balls, they should drop the same. Now, remember in Mythbusters, they had paintballs, which that was a problem because paintballs have horrible aerodynamics. They fly all over the place.